Welcome to the Outside the Business Boxes podcast, where we're talking about how to ignite your business today for the future using systems for everything you do in your business to make your life, your employees' lives, and your customers' lives easier for you to ultimately enjoy your business and, of course, make more money. I'm your host, Chad Murray. Thank you for joining me here at Outside the Business Box podcast. I am Chad Murray. Your host, it hasn't been real most this lately. And so I am, this time I'm back. The last podcast I did, I swore that I'd be start doing some consistency and everything back with my podcast like I was for years. And and quite frankly, I got to tell you, my life has changed. And I'm going to kind of go into that where I've been in uh, our footnotes today uh, that I'll kind of tell you where I'm at, where I'm going and, you know, uh, and how I can help your business. And so my pivot in my coaching has gone through uh, to where I'm now uh, a marketing company. Um, you know, I'm going to show how I've rebranded. I'm going to talk today about where Master Services, my chimney service, is, is at and how well it's doing in, in the new 2023 economy. Um, you know, what, how, what we've done to pivot. And then, of course... I'm going to give a little business tips and some marketing jargon talk. So I do not have a guest today. I will be trying to bring on more guests, and I'm going to uh, uh, hopefully uh, spark and unite a revolution with getting your business in your own mind to explode. So no further ado, let's talk about where has Chad been lately? (laughs) Well, I mean, I had my mental health scares and stuff when it came to the COVID and everyone knows my story. If you don't, if you're a new listener, I almost died from COVID a year and a half ago and I had some PTSD from it. Uh, This past summer uh, when my wife got COVID the same week on the yearly anniversary that I got it and I had to take care of her and it brought out some stuff that some demons in me, some anxieties and it was, it was rough. I talk about it. I'm not scared to say that. Yes, I, was in a mental uh, depression slash ang- not really a depression. I mean, that's not right. An anxiety. I had anxiety. Anxiety is real. If you have anxieties, it's okay. Uh, I, I strongly suggest you go talk to somebody, help get your help. I'm not a big pill guy. I did go get some sleeping pills, which helped me sleep. But, you know, I, I believe in internally helping yourself and getting in the right mind and get back to who you are and, I'm not fully there. I got to tell you, I'm still having anxieties, but my anxieties have shifted from doom and gloom like I was all fall to now I have the fun kind of anxieties, the building a new business, the excitement of rebranding myself uh, from a business coach, which I still do coach my favorite clients. Uh, and I, and I, I have gotten rid of some clients that were not healthy for me here in the last two months that only because they weren't they weren't progressing. So now I've, I've got my coaching down uh, to exactly how much I want. Uh, if you still want to be coached by me, feel free absolutely to call or message me and we can talk about it. But my marketing side is my main focus now of doing marketing. So um, I'll kind of go into the, to how I became a marketer, why I became a marketer here and after I, I go through my bullet points of, of my, uh, my podcast notes here. So Let's talk about my service business, Master Services. You know, we're like the opposite of everybody at all times. And so during COVID, all the chimney services were kicking ass and and getting booked out. While I was getting, while Master Services, as I say I, was getting its ass probably kicked. I mean, we lost money in 2020. And it was a downtime. Their calls weren't coming in like they used to be. My tickets were down. I mean, it was not a good year for us. Now, we got a buttload of money from the government, so it was coast time, right? Well, I mean, here we are now. All that money, I'm not going to say it's gone, but it's not where it was. And and we floated through 2021 and made a huge leap forward with training and, and uh, bought a new property, put a ton of money into the property, and... Uh, Really ended up actually taking a loss for 22 as well, but it was the good kind of loss. It was all asset losses. It was all, what are we going to do? And it was really a setup for 2023, which at the time 
was the plan, but didn't really wasn't focusing on that uh, as much as I was. You know, let's get into the property. Let's 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 find a way to you know this that the other. We re are we we finally found something out with as many leads as I'm able to generate with my own marketing through Master Services in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and Oklahoma City. I really do believe I think we'd probably do one of the top five. I will say probably on how many leads we do get and then we convert and we're still building uh on how to get all our numbers better and doing well but we really thought that with with what the kind of numbers we get that if we started hiring and training for the fall in june that by the time we got into october we would have the best staff ever it was always my dream to have all 22 of the working trucks that we have flowing and growing and going and, and then you know in the fall when the cold fronts hit we were just gonna be doing just record numbers and guess what <laughs> that shit did not happen we still had an average fall but it was not gangbusters we had wasted hundreds of thousands of dollars on training this fall this last summer and it, we paid the price i mean we we ended up uh we, we we almost broke even for the year. We didn't lose a, a ton. I thought we were going to be in the, you know, the three to $400,000 loss, but we're probably like it. I just looked at my P and L they're not quite done, but it's going to go down. We're probably going to lose like 50,000 last year, you know, but we, our revenue is 4.3. We didn't hit the five like I wanted or, you know, 4.7, but we did hit 4.3, which was up from 3.75 or 3.8 or nine, whatever it was the year before. And so, um, so yes, uh, what did we do though in 2022 that I'm different than everybody else right now that I keep hearing what everybody's doing in 23? Well, 25 years previously, we never made money every week of January. We always had one dud month or week, and it's usually the last week. And you know, uh, we have made more money in January before than we did in 23. But you know what we did do in 23? Right now, we're going to have made money in every week this this month. Um, we won't break the record for how much we did. We had a, in years past, we've had some monster first two weeks and, and then kind of died out, but still made money for the month. But we didn't do it consistently. Now, here's the kicker are pivoting to doing more construction and being more of a masonry company has exploded. We are booked out into March, middle of March. Actually, I even hear we're actually going in through March right now. Now, not every week we have break even money on there already booked, but we made it to where it's like, we only have to sell the week before 15, 20 grand to make money the next week, which is super easy. And we also, we did something that I never do and I should have done years ago is we downsized right in the first of the year. We cut the fat. We are lean, mean fighting machine at master services right now. I give the management crew. I mean, oh my God, Cody, John, Brian, Gina, David, R managing this business like never before uh i mean our leads are like everybody else have gone down but our closing ratio is up our 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 spos our sales opportunity are up the guy and now it's great is as we slow down we don't have to sell like i said twenty thirty thousand dollars a week to make next week profitable instead of having to sell Forty seventy thousand dollars, or actually, it's called fifty to seventy thousand dollars every week. Now, we do sell. I mean, I mean, so last week we we sold seventy seven thousand. That was the that was the uh, I suppose you'd say the third week of the year, uh, and we did we had sales of seventy seven thousand. That's not a revenue. That was our sales. Uh, pretty good. I and and I know this. I, I as an entrepreneur vision guy in my business, I no longer watch the sales numbers. I only look at the big numbers, the monthlies. But last week, uh, I had to help a client and I had to call my CFO, David, and I go, where are we at? This, that, the other. I need to know for to help a client out and blah, blah, blah. And I got in our system and I had to look and 
pleasantly surprised. So things are going well. So that pivot is making our 2023. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't own chimney companies, but what can you do to pivot, invest for what's going to happen in your future to where you can take the months that you don't do well and make those profitable? And it's hard. I've got a client, Miriam. Uh, she's in the landscaping, uh, uh, lighting, or excuse me, sprinkler business, not a landscaping, sprinkler business and exterior lighting. And I got to tell you, we were racking our brains last week on what she could do in January and February to ease the pain because that nobody's calling about your sprinkler system. There's uh, not a lot of lights. Just, she just dies at that time. The rest of the year, she's flowing and going. She does well. But we, you know, without starting a completely new business, you know, nobody gives a shit about their, <laughs> about their sprinkler system. Unless, I guess, they left it on and a freeze came through and it busted it all up. You know, but that, you know, that is... Uh, not what's happening right now this year. And so we did have a freeze not long ago. She did get some business out of it. But point is, is as we as I digress and we go into everybody else, what can you do to make those months? Do you need to downsize? Do you need to add something? Do you need to do what? Do you need to add more marketing? Do you need to do whatever? So what a great pivoting thing to what I'm doing now. How did Chad and why did Chad get into marketing? Well, Chad got into marketing because Chad mainly did his own marketing for years. Chad then also started coaching a marketing company and they, we have become super good friends. And, and when it came down to it, they allowed to help me and I'm helping them. Hosio, Steve, you, you know, I love you brother. Uh, and he has helping me and, and we're white labeling between each other and, and, and we're really learning to be the best marketing companies that we absolutely can be. I actually reached out to Spark Marketer and I'm gonna be talking to him. It was a couple months back. I have not reached out to Taylor since I need to. I know uh, that he was on, I believe on Surefire uh, tonight with uh, Mark uh, Stoner and, uh, and, uh, and they were talking about, you know, what to do in a down economy, which everybody is now. And so, I mean, you're gonna have to do things that you never had to do before. And I'm pretty sure, and I didn't even listen, but I'm pretty sure that what Taylor was probably saying, and I am just putting out there what I'm pretty sure, is boy, does your marketing got to be on. Boy, does you, you have to have the right company doing your marketing. Boy, do you need to be have the, the right budgetary thing to make sure that you are showing up for when people are looking for you, when they do start looking again. And that's where we come to marketing. What is master services? Done? Now, Hosio helped me out with my AdWords and Hosio helped me out with some town pages. But before I met Hosio, I had already done in the Houston, or excuse me, in Dallas all myself. I got myself on page one. I got myself in the maps. You know, I did all that with my own work. Hosio then brought in and started helping Houston out and got Houston to where it's, it's growing and doing better. And, and, the, and with that success, I also had to take over my AdWords account because AdWords is such a new beast that they've made it so complicated to do it right that they started doing my entire company's AdWords and, and boy, did they optimize that stuff to where it is phenomenal. You want an AdWords campaign specialist, you go to Hosio. That, those guys, oh my God, can do a, a, a campaign for you for, for uh, AdWords. I do not do it. I, if I did do it, I'd be honest with you, I would just sub it out to them and charge you an extra fee. Just go to Hosio. Let them do it. Call Steve or John. And so, okay. So really, what's the tip of the day for marketing? I, I think I'm going to talk to the little companies. The guys that, that are getting to the point as you grow your business where what you've done on your own is no longer enough. So what do you have to start doing? You have to start building a brand. What is a brand? A brand means that you now you're all logoed up, which you probably did already, but now your website's got to match your vans, your shirts, what you say, your company language. All this has to start working for a brand. And then that all has to be introduced and relayed to your website so that Google recognizes your brand. Now we got to start talking content. Is your content saying what you say, what you do? 
And is your content dead on for the niche you're in? Is your content per page being optimized to be able to where Google is going to say, I think this guy should be on page one? Interesting, huh? It takes that to do it. And when, you, when you're a smaller company, you don't know what that's going to take. You don't know how to link the back. You don't know how to do the back end of marketing because you're not, that's not what you do. People are calling you to work on their HVAC system. They're calling you to work on your chimney. They're calling you to do their sprinklers. They're calling you because that's what you do, specialist. That's what you do. So why in the hell as a business owner that you do your niche, why in the hell are you still doing your own marketing? It's just, it doesn't make no sense to me. Because I promise you, if you find a good marketing company like I am, and I already have clients getting massive, awesome results in the maps through three pack and SEO, that it ends up being like the old phrase if your good marketing company is good doing their job, they're free. Because they're doing what you can't do, and you're getting more leads for the value of the pay that you're paying them. And a lot of small guys, they don't understand that it is, in the name of my podcast, come on, let's talk about it, is go get yourself in trouble, right? It's the Outside the Business Box podcast, and you have got to get yourself in trouble to get more leads than you need. You know when you need marketing more than you need marketing? is when you don't need or when nobody's looking for you. Because the one person that looks on Google needs to see you three to four times in that page to make the decision to call you. Marketing is more for when you're dead than it is for when you're busy. And everybody always relates that to, I'm busy, I don't need marketing. But when you slow down is when you sure as hell do need marketing. That's the marketing, that's the marketing way I build my business. Yeah, I actually turned my AdWords off for years during the season. Didn't need it because I did so well with my on page and my three pack that I didn't need AdWords. Now, I then learned to make sure you keep it on a little bit because you got to you got to tickle the monster a little bit. Google, they like they like it because you are getting I mean, you got to think about it every time an AdWord clicks to your website. That's a click to your website. The more relevant your website's getting clicks to it, whether it's paid or organic, Google likes that. So I would always suggest you keep your AdWords on Never, ever turn it completely off. Tickle the monster. Poke it. Poke the monster. And so, yeah, uh, I will be referring to the monster as Google for the rest of the time of my podcast. I like it. Uh, I like to say poke the monster and tickle the monster. And so, (laughs) you know, hey, that's what we have to do. We got to poke the monster. And so the more you poke the monster, the more it's going to like you. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to wake up and it's going to grab you and it's going to put you on page one. So Google is that monster. So let's make sure that whoever you're hiring, you're doing, sure is doing it. So, yeah, so I have a revelation for everybody who is looking to find a, a, a marketing company. This is the plain symbol. I'm going to teach you what you need to ask. So number one, you need to ask them what their SEO strategy is. What do you do to make me appear on page one. Here's your, here's what you're wanting to hear. You're wanting to hear they're not buying links. They're organically getting you links and building you out stuff and getting you uh, linking to you that is all organic. Okay. It's all made by them or in-house or by white label or whoever they're doing it for, but it is not being purchased through Russia, India, or the Philippines. Now you might have VAs from those places that are helping them out, but it's natural content. What does Google like? They want to see natural work being done. Not too much, not too little. The right amount of work being done on the size of your company that will start ranking you. And I will tell you how to do it is just as simple as make sure that everything is being done naturally and organically. No buying big ass expensive links that are just pretty much putting your name address and your link to your website on there or your Google listing. Because even though it might work, it's so much more powerful to do it other ways naturally. And it works just as fast. So that's the way I suggest. Number two, 
are they getting you citations? Are they making sure that you're clear across the internet? So that's that's a big thing that you need to do. Um, just mainly what you're trying to do is are they transparent? What kind of reporting are they going to give you? Are they going to show you what they do? I do all of this. I will show you exactly what I've done every week. And so not every week, every month. I mean, I'm not going to send it over to you all the reports, but if you want to see the work being done, by God, here it is. Let me show you. I created this many map embedments. I did this web 2.0s. I ended up doing some buying some websites that are relevant out of business. I bought them. I then ended up slapping the con your content on there, aging it a little bit, and then linking back to your website. I mean, I'm I'm linking you with other businesses that are niche like businesses or the same niche, you know. And so uh, I'm doing what Google wants you to do, and we're doing the on page. We're adding pages that are relevant to the keyword that you need to rank for, and then we're we're tying it all in. And by God, if you literally just optimize a website good enough and optimize the Google My Listing the same, it's funny how you don't have to do anything and the rankings will start going up. I mean, the one thing that's big is your logo, your meta description, your title tag, and your first link up in your menu should all be a, a, your main keyword. It should have some version of your main keyword. And it's funny, I can go to websites that, that they don't have that. Even good ranking sites don't have that, but it is the easiest thing because the first thing a bot does when he goes to your website, it hits your logo, it hits your meta description, your title tag, and then it goes up to your menu to the first click link that's up there in your menu. And if you have the home button or a home, it says home, have your web guy take that off because your logo already is there and everybody knows that. So you're, you're not getting what Google wants to know about your website if it's spinning back to the homepage when it, that's the homepage right next to it in the logo. It's not giving it any, any information. So you want it to, to be relevant to your main keyword. So that's my suggestion. It works for us. We've done, done super well in the past now, and I guarantee I'll continue to do that in the future. Okay, so that's your marketing tip in a little bit. and. and uh, I, I think as the younger uh, the younger generation is looking, you know, you want to spend a little bit more marketing than what you're comfortable with because it's the only way you're going to do stuff to get more leads. And you have to understand that when you go organic, not pay per click, not Angie's List, not not relying on Google AdWords, it's an investment. So you got to realize you got to keep paying so that we can tickle the monster and poke the monster more. And it takes time to build all that out. It just takes time. So get ready to invest and inspect and get your business to where it needs to be, to where you don't have to rely on. I've been out of Angie's list and I've never done Yelp because I've never needed any of that stuff. Because I've never done it. I don't need it. I get enough work without it. And so, and we're still growing the business. I mean, my God, you know, I mean, in the last 10 years, we've gone from 2 million to four, almost four and a half million. You know, 4.3 this last year, a little over 4.3. So, I mean, what, and we don't do any lead gens whatsoever. And so, yeah. Okay, business tips now. What is a good business tip for 2023? It's very simple. Sharpen the tools in the shed. You're going to need to be as lean and mean as you possibly can and you're gonna to have to make sure that everything on every estimate is being estimated, sold properly, and done correctly. If it's not being done and there's meat left on that bone, you're losing money or you're not making the money you should, which to me feels like I'm losing money. You have got to manage the best you've ever managed before in what we call a down economy. Now, let me give you a little prediction. Everybody's you know, I at least have been watching where I've seen a lot of doom and gloom. They're saying it's coming in 2023. I got to tell you, I don't see it. Let me tell you why. I'm watching a lot of other sectors and a lot of other stuff. And you know what? I just saw a report, which, which already vindicated what I was thinking. People are still spending money on services. We're always slower in January and February and, and probably March as well. 
But I'm going to tell you, I do think that what's going to happen come April, May, and June is going to be as average as can be, not a down economy. And I will tell you one of the reasons how that will happen for you. Stop listening to the fucking noise. Be you. Work on your business. Make it the best business you ever had. And I promise you, you will never even feel what they call a recession if it so-called happens. By God, we've been in a recession for a year and a half. But yet, we're acting like, and they're like, totally acting like it's not happening because of this and that, or we're down here, but up there. Okay, none of that noise matters. What are you doing for your business to make sure that you are making money? You're getting more leads. You're making sure the money you are getting is at the top level of what it could be. That's what it's going to take, boys and girls. It is going to take you managing your business the best you ever could. So, guys, that's that's my show tonight. I'm back, baby. I know I said that. That's 2.0 now. That's mini chat now talking since what I said in the last podcast, which if you're listening to this in session, it's been months since my last podcast. My last podcast, I think, was even labeled I'm back, baby, or something. So I really am back. I will be more consistent every week on doing this, and I will be doing business and marketing tips, and I will. I will share my experiences and I will be as honest with you. I am me, Chad Murray, and I'm going to give you me every week. I'm excited to, to help you do everything that you do. I am not a boring podcast person, a boring person to talk to. I want to ignite your bones. I want to make you excited. I want you to feel that you're growing something or you can grow something. You will be growing something and it's your business. So go make it happen. Until next week, this is Chad Murray signing off for Outside the Business Podcast. If you're interested in, let's do some business now. If you're interested in business coaching, you can give me a call or message me on Facebook. If you're interested in marketing, By God, I can get you on first page. I can do it. I don't promise results. I promise the work's being done. And by God, you just no contract. Because guess what that means? I don't need it. Why do I not need a contract? Because your rankings are going to speak for themselves. I will pivot. I'll show you the work. And if something happens where it's not happening, we'll make sure that it does happen. I'll be transparent with you at all times. You can call me anytime. I will talk to you. I will show you. I will share my strategy. We'll talk about what's going on in your business. And we will, marketing and business-wise, make you a better business. That's my goal. I want to help you, and I will. So go ahead and message me or call me. If you want to email me, you can email me. It's very simple. Outsidethebusinessbox at gmail.com. You want to call me or text me. It's 972-877-3585. Hit the rewind button. I don't repeat myself. <laughs> Guys, that's my podcast tonight. I hope to see you. I can't wait to talk to you next week.